Good morning, Place Church. If you would, stand with us as we begin to worship and sing this morning. Morning Place Church. You guys can have a seat. How's everybody doing? Look at your neighbor and say you're so good looking. <laughs> now look at your wife and apologize, gentlemen. Well, good morning. Welcome to church this morning. We are so glad to have you. If you don't know me, my name is Tara. My husband is Pastor Greg Hans. We are so excited to have you in church this morning. If you're visiting with us for the first time, welcome. We are glad to have you. Please make sure you stop back um, under the TV on your way out the door and say, hey, it's my first time, and they'll have a gift for you. That's just our way of saying thank you for worshiping and choosing this church this morning. We have a couple of announcements this morning coming up. The first one is that we have water baptism. Is that my first one? Yes. See, someone st stole my notes off the front seat. I think they thought it was trash. And so now I'm going to wing it. Okay, so we have water baptism, July the 5th. That's next Sunday after the second service. If you're interested in being water baptized, visit our Facebook page or our website, wickenburgchurch.com forward slash the place AZ under events. You can sign up to be water baptized. The baptism will take place out that back door in, um, on our patio. So you don't want to miss out on that. Even if you're not being water baptized, come and support those that are. 
um, encourage them in their next step of faith. We also have coming up, youth group is starting this week. <laughs> right? Or that's in a, in a week. In a week. Okay, don't. Don't get me in trouble. P4T party is coming on July the 6th at 6 p.m. They will be meeting for Pirates of the Caribbean, a pirate party, so you don't want to miss out on that. And then on that Wednesday, the youth group, um, the little kids will be having a pajama party, so you don't want to miss out on that. We have a short video um, from our youth director. What up, everybody? My name is Gilly. I am the youth director here at the Place Church, and I am super excited to let you know that next week, Kids ministry starts, yes! And P4K and P4T, it's going to be a week packed full of kids stuff for me. I am super excited. Now, I wanted to give you guys a couple updates. We are going to be doing, uh, we're going to be having kids ministry check-in in the main sanctuary. Unfortunately, we're not going to be doing nursery or using this room here at this time. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be checking in in the main sanctuary, and then the kids are going to be able to sit with mom and dad or in the designated kids zone, uh, yes, that's right, kids zone, where we're going to watch worship together. Now, it's been on my heart for a long time to have the kids experience the worship in the main sanctuary, but also for everyone to know that we have a kids ministry that is a growing, alive, living, and active. There's a lot of times that I hear, where's all the kids? Well, you know what? They're next door, which is exactly where we're going to go after we're dismissed by Pastor Greg or Pastor Jason, and we will go through the stage door and go across the street and with security in the not the street, the parking lot. And we will be going in there. We're going to get sanitized up when we walk in the building. We're going to be going into our designated areas. And we decided that this is the best plan of action for uh, dealing with the summer, dealing with, with COVID-19. Uh, we're going to make sure that we keep the best cleaning techniques possible. And over there, the kids are going to get their Bible lesson. They're going to get some uh, chance to play games together. They're going to, we got the playground. We're going to make sure the kids stay hydrated. It's going to be a great time. Trust me. I will make sure they have fun. All right. I can't wait to see all my friends for every kid that's here right now watching. Look, you can go give me a hug later, but I cannot wait to see you. It's going to be a lot of fun. We've got so much fun stuff planned uh, this coming month. I love you all. Peace. So that's exciting. It's super exciting for kids. I told the last service that Pastor Greg was talking to someone last week, and they said, um, you know, when we first saw Gilly, he's like over six feet tall. He's a big guy. He's got these tattoos, and he's kind of scary. And he said, what is Pastor Greg doing? Does he know what he's doing? And he goes, but then you, you meet him, and then you see the fruit of the ministry, of the children's ministry, and you know that he's doing a good job. We appreciate you, Gilly. We thank you for yesterday. We all went up yesterday up to um, Heritage um, Zoo. And... Um, Big turnout, and you are a people gatherer. You gather people unto you, and that's I think that's what Jesus called kids to come to him, and you're doing that. So we're proud of you, man. Okay, I'm not going to cry. <laughs> okay, let's pray for today's service. Heavenly Father, we thank you for each and every person in here, especially for our children. We pray that um, next week as they regather together that they uh, just draw closer to you and their, their time spent with you will be um, fruitful. We thank you for this morning. We ask that you have your way in our service as we submit and surrender this service to you. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Would you stand with us as we continue to worship this morning?
Jesus, we are unshakable, and not because of anything that we've done, but because of who he is, and it's all because of who he is. Sing worthy. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of every praise we could ever spring.
Jesus the name. Jesus the name above every other name. Jesus the only one who could ever sing. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. We live for you. Holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder. Show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. Oh, we worship you, Jesus. We worship you. We worship you. And I will build my life upon your love. It is a firm foundation. I will put my trust in you alone. And I will not be shaken. Have a seat. How's how's 1030 doing today? All right. Highly caffeinated and ready to rock and roll just the way I like you. <laughs> Great to have you. If this is your first time here, my name is Pastor Greg Hintz, lead pastor here at the Place Church. Thank you so much for being here today. We know you could be anywhere, yet you choose to be here, and that sure does mean a lot to us. You picked a good week to be here. Here we are in our final week of our series called Man Cave. And what we've been looking at in the course of the last three weeks is the things that we surround ourselves with and why those things are important to us. And we've kind of gone on a journey. Our journey started with purpose. 
saying that purpose is important to our lives, that if we don't have purpose, then it's hard to get up in the morning and get, get going and live the life that you have. Last week, we talked about legacy. Legacy is living for beyond the years that the Lord gives you on this earth. What legacy are you leaving? Everyone here is going to leave a legacy. You choose what it's going to be. And with that message, each and every single week, we've been talking about different man caves. Now, we've talked about, like, the sports man cave, the biker man cave. Last week, I hooked you up with the golf man cave for all my golfers. But this week, I have probably the number one man cave for Wickenburg, Arizona. It's been overlooked until now, but when I think about the ultimate Wickenburg man cave, it looks a little bit like this. <laughs> All right, yeah. You know, out there on the horse, out there in the open range, roping something, catching something, just being out there, there's this incredible sense of purpose and sense of peace that comes with many of our ropers and many of our cowboy people out there. Now, one thing you may not know about Pastor Greg is that Pastor Greg is allergic to horses. <laughs> That's right, but I've been here long enough. You know, unfortunately, I can't be on a horse with you, but I have decided that if I was in the rodeo arena, that I would be what is known as a steer wrestler. That's right, the guy who jumps off a horse and wrestles down a steer. Unfortunately, because of my allergy to horses, I'm not going to be able to do that. Uh, but I just if I wasn't allergic, I would definitely be a gold buckle guy. All right, I would definitely have the gold buckle for steer wrestling. Now, uh, being here today, our very last week, man cave. We want to talk about something that is important. It's something important for us to live the life that we've been called to. And the subject that I want us to look at today is this one word, passion. Like, do you have passion for the life that you're living today? Are, are you passionate about that? Have you tapped into that which really drives your passion and, and, and your sense of belonging and purpose and, and legacy? And while you're here, passion ties in with all of those things. I like to say that passion is the motivating desire to get up in the morning. Like, what are your mornings like? Is there something that you don't need to set an alarm because you're so passionate about what you're doing and so passionate about what you're going to go into that day that, man, you're just rising and running after it. I know sitting inside of this place that there are many who are living out the passion that God has placed on their life. When you look at your life, there is a passion that's driving you. And what you found is that because of that, Many things don't bother you that you continue on pursuing the passion that God has placed on the inside of you. But I also know that there is a potential that maybe for many that are here today, when we talk about a passion driving us, that we find that we haven't tapped in to that passion yet. And if we haven't tapped into that passion in our lives, what we oftentimes find is that our life can become somewhat monotonous. I remember a commercial back in the 80s with the guy that said, it's time to make the donuts, right? And he would just show up every day and every day he'd say the same thing, it's time to make the donuts. If, if our life is lacking passion, that's what our life is like. It's just another day of monotony and the wheel of our life continues to turn. And what it does is it digs the rut even deeper. Maybe for some of us, it's so deep that it's hopeless. I'm, I'm never going to get out of this place. I'm, I'm, I'm never going to break free of the monotony of my life. Well, I have good news for you that God brought you here today because your life does not need to be passionless. In fact, I believe that it's a very important journey for each of us to go on to begin to discover the passions that we have and allow God to begin to use those passions that he put there. That's right, I said that he put there. We said week one that God has planted purpose within us, but I will also tell you this, that God has planted 
passion within us. There's something within you that you're passionate about. And if you haven't discovered it yet, you will as you begin to seek and go on that journey. I love this verse in the book of Ecclesiastes, a book penned by Solomon. In chapter 3, verse 11, I want you to listen to what Solomon said. He said, he has made everything beautiful in its time. Also, he has put eternity into man's heart, yet so that he cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. I want to draw your attention to the portion of the sentence that says this, he has put eternity into man's heart. This has been a highly debated verse over the years, but I want you to actually look at your life. And I want you to look at your life through the lens of this verse, the fact that God has placed something in the heart of man. I don't know about you, but in my life, I've often found myself saying these words, there must be more. I was created for more than just this. And many people that I've talked to, they've had that same thing inside of them, just this overwhelming realization deep down. They don't know all the details, but deep down, they were created for something more, or there was more to life than what they were currently experiencing. And when I think about this verse, I think about what God has planted deep on the inside of us, that he's put eternity, this thing that's greater than us, that he's planted purpose, and he's planted passion on the inside of us. And for us, it's, we're on a journey to discover that to employ that, to use that for the glory of God. Don't forget the words that Jason told us on week one where he said this, everybody is a 10 somewhere. You know, that was the quote that kind of resonated out of the entire message that really touched the hearts of the people. Everybody is a 10 somewhere. What does that mean? It means that there's something on the inside of you that God has put there that, that you're a 10 at. And sometimes we'll look through the lens of other people. Well, I wish I was a 10 at this or that, or I wish I was more like him or her, but, but you are you. I said, be the best you you can be because everybody else is taken. That God's created you to be you. Don't compare yourself to anyone else. Figure out that thing that you're a 10 at and run with it because God has placed that there on the inside of you. And to talk about this subject of passion, you know, every week we've been having someone else communicate with us, and I'm really happy to tell you today that I am going to be joined right here on stage with the man, the myth, the legend, Brian Music. Give it up for Brian Music as he comes on up here. <laughs> Oh, hello, hello. Now, maybe many of you haven't seen Brian before, but all of you have definitely heard him because he is our Jedi Knight sound engineer who makes us sound better than we look. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think we look pretty good, though, honestly. We do, we do. So I, I had Brian here because we've talked about passion a lot, and it's been interesting for me to see his passion, how it's grown over the years, how it's morphed and changed, and how God has used his passion to make an incredible impact. So I know a lot of the folks don't really know too much of your story. Can you share a little bit looking back at childhood and this idea of passion? Yeah, sure. So first off, though, today is my 17-year wedding anniversary. Woo! So honey, I love you. Happy anniversary. <laughs> I'm embarrassing her. She's <laughs> blushing. She's the blushing one in the back. <laughs> so I am our church's audio engineer. I'm also kind of the service production manager, uh, which means I give direction to the band, uh, the lights and all that stuff that's, you know, all techie. Um, but this journey to get here began at a very, very young age. So when I was a kid, we didn't really have... TV a lot, but what we did have is a big old piano that wasn't the best sounding thing. And we always had a turntable and records and tapes, and there was always music constantly. It was also very, very customary in our household that when you reach middle school, you join band class and you learn an instrument or two or three or as many as possible, because that was just kind of our thing. So. How many have you learned? 
Uh, more than I can count. It's, <laughs> it's more a question of what can I not play, really. Um, I got so, you. That's yeah. good. So he, he starts out with having this music around him and this idea of sound at a young age. And that even didn't only go into school with band class, but it actually went into church, too. Right. So we were members of a church uh, here in town that was, uh, they really took focus on, on the arts, uh, doing singing competitions, uh, acting, doing skits on stage, Christmas productions, all that stuff. Um, and, and through that church and experiencing music, uh, it got me questioning, okay, how come this song makes me feel this way and this song makes me feel that way? I have this, uh, this weird curiosity about me that I, I have to know how things work. And so that, that kind of made me start to look into, well, what's this mixer back here? How, how does this thing work to blend all these instruments on stage and voices together? Was that your first experience behind the mixing It actually board? was. I, I, I began touching mixers, I want to say 14 or 15, uh, with the audio guy from that church who didn't know too much, um, but he was there and he was doing a good job. So, you know. so talk about that change from being on stage to being kind of at the back of the auditorium. Yeah, so... Um, I've been on, on stage a lot. I, I was on stage in church. I was on stage in a few different heavy metal bands. Um, but, but yeah. yes. You guys didn't know that. He I, is. I had hair down to my waist, and I was doing <laughs> head banging and playing Picture, solos. pictures. Watch on Facebook. I actually have pictures. <laughs> they are on my Facebook page. Snoop my Facebook page. You'll find some fun pictures of me with long, long hair. Um, so, yeah, um, through through um, high school, and uh, I got this unique grant. Uh, to, it was a full ride scholarship for one of the top audio schools in our country, uh, which was kind of perfect because it, it, it curbed my curiosity to need to understand this underlying foundation of music, and and why this demo track sounds really rough and it doesn't impact you, but the polished version of it really impacts you, and there's a, a certain beauty to it. And it was just, I, I needed to understand that process. And you went to this school and there was kind of this joy in leaving. I know it's hard. It's going to be hard for you guys to hear this. In leaving heaven on earth, Wickenburg, Arizona. There was an absolute joy <laughs> in leaving this town. And I never, ever, 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 ever intended on coming back. <laughs> ever. And then God intervened. This is an interesting part of the story. So he goes to school, kind of follows his passion, gets this education, and then... So what's funny about the and then, so after college, this passion kind of went dormant. Like, I couldn't find audio work. There were no gigs. Uh, I didn't have the money to build a home studio. And three people called me at that point in time saying, Brian, I feel like God is telling us to tell you, you need to move back home. And I'm like... Uh-uh. <laughs> no. Uh, the last person was my mom, and I said, I wouldn't move back there unless I had no other option. <laughs> Never tell that to your mother. <laughs> Especially when mom, my mother is saying, God says this. <laughs> because God has a way of directing you. So to make a long story short, I wound up back here. And when those phone calls came in, that was the exact time frame that Pastor Greg was starting to meet with a bunch of people in a living room, okay, a bunch, that was like a dozen people. A dozen, people, yeah. A dozen people in a living room and start building the, this church. So this was 11 years ago. So we start the church and the Lord starts speaking something directly contrary to the desires that Brian had. Now that's important for you to know. I mean, this is kind of like your Jonah moment, right? No joke. I mean, there. if you have a passion and you're not practicing it, there is a frustration in life that, that can't be curbed unless you're practicing that passion. So I'm driving down Wickenburg Way, grumbling, mad at life, bleh, you know, and I heard a voice, and it was Captain Picard saying, tractor beam, engage. <laughs> and no joke, all of a sudden, I find myself turning into the parking lot of this old bowling alley building. I'm like, why am I here? And I just was compelled to walk inside. And there's Pastor Greg. He had been there for maybe 15, 20 minutes. Uh, this was the first time that he had keys for that building. We just began chatting. And I'm like, you guys need help. 
like a lot of help. I can't even express to you how much help you guys need, but I'm going to help fulfill that need. And just because, you know, God spoke. It was literally a bowling alley known for the dirtiest bathrooms and the coldest beer in town. All right, that was it. That was how it got famous. And uh, we were, we turned this bowling alley into a church, which was awesome. But my favorite part was the bowling alley sat between a tattoo parlor and a bar. And we definitely use that in advertising, all right? We're the church that sits between the tattoo parlor and the bar. It also rained inside a couple of times because <laughs> it's sealing water pipes that busted. It wasn't in good shape. But, but the Lord called us to it. It's what, in our part of the journey, that's where we were. And it was just awesome that Brian walked. We never met before. He was in a place of frustration. You weren't really serving the Lord at that time either. No, uh, no, I was not. My, I was saying that my faith was 80%. It was just kind of being raised in church. I, I'm that kind of person that I believe if you've never questioned what you've heard, then you're not really having faith. You're just brainwashed. So I went through a season where I was actively trying to figure it out for myself. And so he comes in, right, and begins to use this this passion, and, his, and it, he was right. We absolutely did need that, and we've just seen that kind of grow over the years. Definitely, um, and that building was the thing that renewed my faith, because every time that we spoke a need, we verbally spoke a need, that need walked in that front door it, at just the right time, and it was just amazing. I'll just tell you one story. I didn't tell first service this, but you guys are cool. Uh, so... One of the needs he's talking about, right, we, we were drywalling the children. We, we built these walls and we're drywalling, right? No one knows how to drywall, but I'm stubborn. He was like, I can drywall, sure. I'll do it. I got YouTube, right? So I, I'm grabbing this drywall thing and I'm about to put it up there and I'm going to drywall. Literally, a guy walks through the door. Right after, I'm like, we'll do it. I'll just figure it out. It'll be fine. The guy, the guy comes through and he says, do you need any help? I was like, well, what do you do? I'm not making this up. All right. I'm not like fluffing anything. This is factual. Was he was there. The guy's like, I'm a drywaller. <laughs> sure. Yeah. I guess I'll let you assist me in drywalling these things. And so, you know, showed him a little bit and he looked at me. I'll never forget this. He was like, you know what? Um, why don't you just go home? And uh, I'll have this done in two days. He sent me home, and he had it done in two days. This was four days before our grand opening. <laughs> like, no joke, four days before. We're like, ah! <laughs> That's why I said I'll do it, right? It would have been really ugly kids' ministry. I promise you that. Uh, and I'll tell you the last little part of the story. The drywaller that walked through that door uh, had never been to our church and left that day and didn't come, to, didn't come to the church after we opened or anything. Today, he comes to this church. He's part of this church and he's a member of this church. But God used him far before any of that ever happened. Last question is this. If you have someone out there kind of questioning, you know, what's my passion? What's, what am I supposed to be doing here? What advice would you give them? There's a very old saying that no one really knows where it came from. And that saying is, when the pupil is ready, the master will appear. Mm. Translate that to the modern day. When the student is ready, the teacher will appear. People who have a lot of passion, they're always looking to share that passion. You get me talking about audio, I will talk your ear off for two hours or more, and trust me, you'll not want to talk to me ever again because <laughs> I won't shut up. Um, but people with great passion are actively seeking to share that knowledge. So, I mean, if you have interest uh, and you just want to explore things, ask people questions, go on YouTube, uh, Speaking of YouTube, I have a friend in, in Oregon who six or seven years ago said, I want to start turning coins in, into rings, which is a weird passion to have. He stuck with it. He made a YouTube channel that has completely taken off. It's called The Mint Change You Can Wear. His passion has blossomed into, I want to go apprentice at a master jeweler's place. And t today, this guy is putting very expensive diamonds inside of coin rings and making beautiful works of art. But what's great about his passion is that he opens up his doors to anybody who wants 
to learn it. Uh, he even accepts students from schools. He'll, he'll bring in whole classrooms on, on field trips. And, and so people with passion love sharing. So find a person who has those passions that, you, that interest you and bother them bug them, uh, make them annoyed with you because if you show them that I want to learn this, you'll wind up finding a teacher. And if you want to be a sound tech, he's looking for an apprentice. I've been looking for a student for years. Where did my volume drop? <laughs> so, um, but yeah, you know, it, it's, it's when that person is ready, I'm here waiting. Um, and if, if that isn't good enough for you, I, I would have to ask you, are you actively seeking a passion? Oh, that's good. Because if you're not, then you're not going to find one. But if, if you want one, if you have this craving, this urge to find that thing that completes you in some artistic way or form, look for it. Go hunting. Go hunting. I love it. Will you guys give it up for Brian Music for sharing his heart with us today? Awesome, brother. You know, I was so happy he got to share about passion because hopefully you felt that passion from his heart when it comes to music and sound and stuff I don't really know too much about, but he's so passionate and willing to learn and teach someone else. Passion in your life is important. And I think when we begin to discover it, we have to make that decision of what it's going to be used for. See, passion could simply be used for ourselves or... We can reach the place where we surrender that passion to God. God, you gave it to me, and I'm going to give it back to you. God, I'm going to live my life in such a way that my passions are going to bring you glory and honor. That's an incredible way for each and every single one of us to live. You know, I'm reminded about this guy who I talk about every now and then. His name is Kanye West. Any Kanye West fans out there? Anyone ever heard of Kanye West before? Now, I knew it was going to be a tough crowd here uh, when it came to Kanye. But let me tell you a little bit about this guy. Kanye, his entire career, Kanye loved one thing, and that was Kanye. <laughs> Kanye loved himself, man. He was so full of himself. He reminds me of Nebuchadnezzar from the Old Testament, right? He just loved himself so much. But a few years ago, Jesus got a hold of Kanye West, and Kanye surrendered his heart and his life to Jesus. Now, there was a change in his life, and everyone's like, yeah, how long is this going to last? And everyone's kind of waiting for Kanye to fall. And I'm like, I don't know, let's look at the fruit of the person's life, right? He came out with an album called Jesus is King, and actually in New York City, an entire building had a banner on it that said three words, Jesus is King. Everyone in New York City that was walking the streets saw that message. Shortly after that album came out, Kanye shows up at the Jimmy Kimmel show. He comes out, and Jimmy Kimmel's kind of questioning him a little bit. They're talking back and forth. And then Jimmy Kimmel said this to Kanye. He said, so, uh, Kanye, would you consider yourself a Christian music artist now? And Kanye just kind of like turns his head to the side, and he was like, a Christian music artist? He was like, Jimmy, he says, I'm a Christian everything. And I thought about those words. And see, Kanye has reached a place where he said, I, I want to be a Christian dad and a Christian husband and a Christian entrepreneur and a Christian musician. I want, to be, I want Christianity. I want Jesus to touch every area of my life. I'm not just a Christian in this one area, but I want to be a Christian everything. And I was thinking to myself, wouldn't it be awesome if each of us said that? It said, I want to be the best Christian employee, the best Christian CPA, the best Christian uh, educator, the best Christian karate instructor. Well, whatever you do, if you came to the place to say, I just want to honor Jesus in this area, because I think sometimes in our life, we, we look at gifting or, or we look at stuff and we say, oh, I wish I, wish I was more like that person. I, I hear that a lot being a pastor. I, oh, I wish I could get up on stage. I wish I could be a pastor. And I say, are you crazy? <laughs> Listen, you don't want to be a pastor, all right? Because being a pastor is a call from God. If God didn't call you to it, please don't do it, all right? My job as a pastor, this is important for you to know, 
It is not to get on stage and pontificate for 30 minutes to make you leave and think to yourself, wow, what a great speaker he is. That is not my job. My success or failure does not rest in how good of an orator I am. My success or failure rests in you, in your ability to be transformed by the living God, to see God begin to work in every area of your life as you surrender daily. My success or failure rests in your transformation. That's where it comes from. And each and every single week when I get up, that's my only goal. My only goal is for your life to be transformed. My only goal is to give you one thing that maybe you can apply to your life that will cause you to, to live out the life that God has for you, to cause you to begin to look at your relationship with your kids or your grandkids or your wife or your husband, to see your life be transformed by the Bible. I'm not here to give you a history lesson on the Bible. I'm not here to, like, give you all these neat facts that make your head get real big so you can walk out and look down on everybody else. That's not my job. Speaking of somebody else, that's not my job. My job is to allow you to come face-to-face -face with the risen king and ask yourself a simple question. Am I living a surrendered life to Jesus today? And if the answer is no, then I'm going to continually bring you back to that crossroads and say, choose wisely. Because God's plans are good. And when you choose God, things in your life line up. And I want you to choose Jesus each and every single day. I want you to reach the place where you can say, I am a Christian everything. And when you can do that, let me tell you, your world will change. I love this verse found in Psalms 139, verses 15 and 16. It says, my frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed substance. In your book were written, every one of them, the days that were formed for me, when as yet there was none of them. I want you to look at the, the, that one section again. It said this. In your book were written, every one of them, the days that were formed for me. Notice what it says, every day. It doesn't say just the good days. It says every day. In other words, every day that you've lived up to this moment has not been a surprise to God. It's not God's like, oh, what is he doing? I can't believe he's doing that again. God is not stressed every day. Every day has been written. Don't, don't worry about it. Don't stress out about that. And here's what you have to see. Not only every day in the past, but every day in the future. In other words, God knows where he's taken you. God brought you here this day to hear this message, to ask yourself the simple question, am I surrendering to God today? He brought you here to ask that question. Why? Because it's part of your journey. It's part of his journey in your life. It's part of the transformative path that you're on today. And that's a question that's going to stick there. And listen, we may answer it as soon as we leave here. All right, my, my life's going to change today. Or it may just stick there. And you may be reminded in a month or a year, and it may come back. You're on a journey, but I need you to know that your journey is written, okay? Let's trust that God is taking us on a path. He's doing something in you, he's changing you, and it's his love that is molding and forming you into the person that you're becoming. Quit trying to figure it out. Quit trying to make sense of it all. Trust him. Your only job each and every single day is this, to get up in the morning and say these words, Jesus, today I choose to surrender to you. Today I choose to trust you. Today I choose to follow you. I want to leave you with this one last verse, and many of you have heard it before. It's Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. It says, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make straight your paths. As we've been talking about the journey and the passion and the purpose and the legacy that you're going to leave, there's your answer right there. 
Your answer each and every single day is to acknowledge him in every area of your life, to trust him completely, to surrender to him. And he even gives you a promise in this verse that he will make your paths straight. Each and every single day, simply say these words, God, help me today take the next right step. And that day, guess what all I want you to do is take one step. You don't need to figure it all out. But I promise you, if every day you simply take that next right step, you'll get at the destination where God's going to take you, and you're going to be very satisfied at the journey you are on. Live your life in surrender. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Will you bow your heads with me? God, I thank you so much, Father, for the world changers that are in this place right now, Lord. I thank you, Father, that you're calling them even in this moment. I thank you, Father, that many hearts were pricked even today to, to think about that idea of passion, to think about the reason that they're here, the thing that's driving them, the thing that's getting them up in the morning, the thing that they're running after. And I pray, Father, that even today, they surrender again to you. They surrender their hearts. They surrender their lives. They surrender everything. And maybe you're, you're hearing my words and, and you're thinking about your journey with Jesus. And everything up to this point has been about you. You've, you've been doing good for you and you've been making it happen. But you know because of what's inside of your heart right now that Jesus is calling you to a relationship with him. And if you're here and you would say, you know what, that's what I want. I want a relationship with Jesus. I want to say a prayer with you. It's a simple prayer. It's just a prayer of surrender. I'm not going to call you to the front. I'm not going to embarrass you. But if you would say, you know what, that's what I want. I'm ready today to surrender my todays and tomorrows to Jesus. On the count of three, I'm going to ask you to do this. I'm just going to ask you to lift your hand up. It's just a sign of surrender to God saying, yeah, that's me. I'm ready, Jesus, to start this journey with you. And so if that's you, on the count of three, I want you to lift your hand up. You ready? One, two, three. Lift up high so I can see it. I see you, 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 I see you. Hands all over this place saying yes to Jesus. Now we're going to pray. And we're going to pray a simple prayer. And we're going to pray this prayer out loud so we can hear ourselves. And if you're here and you're already a follower of Jesus, I want you to pray in solidarity with those praying this, these words for the first time. Say these words. Say, Jesus, I'm sorry for my sin for my mistakes but today I turn to you and I run to you and I ask you to forgive me completely Jesus I believe that you lived that you died and that you rose again and I believe that you have a plan for me help me see me your eyes. Now let me pray for you. Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus for each and every single person that's here. I pray, Father, grace and strength. I pray life and love. I pray that the joy just begins to rise in the hearts of your children today. And I pray that each and every single day, Father, that they live for you. I thank you, Lord, that today we together watch them take their first step. And I pray that we can continue on their path, your path, for their lives. I pray that in the precious name of Jesus. And everybody says, amen. Will you guys give it up for all those that prayed that prayer today? Hallelujah. Man, I'm so excited for you. If you prayed that prayer, I got a special gift for you right back at our Welcome Center. Stop back there. It's a little book called New Beginnings. Uh, just pick that up. That's free. Just take that with you. And just, just give me one second, all right? And if you're watching online and you prayed that prayer, I want you just to put your information right there in the comments, and we'll send you that for free. You can even direct message to the church. We'll get that to you. We just want to watch you grow in your faith with Jesus. All right, I'm back. And so we're going to be doing our tithes and offerings right now. I want you to know that when you give, lives are changed. And so it's really important that when you give, give with that expectation that lives are going to change. I was reminded of this verse today, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6. It says this, whoever sows generously will also reap generously. I love that verse because it's this idea of what we give kind of comes back at us. 
And I think about that, like, like when I'm out and I see someone and I smile at them almost instantaneously. It's a smile back. It's this thing that I gave that automatically comes back. But I want you to know that that's true in every area of your life, including financially. One, one of our core values here is the core value of generosity. What does that mean? And we believe in being faithful and being generous. And we also believe that we can't receive with closed hands. So when we're being stingy or greedy or not being faithful, we can't receive anything. But when we live our life in generosity, when we live our life in faithfulness, not only can we give, but we can receive. And so I want to encourage you today, as you give, to think of yourself with open hands, not only giving, but receiving. Let's pray for the offering we're about to take. God, thank you so much for the ability to give today. I pray, Father, that you bless the offering that we're about to take, and I pray that it is a blessing in the lives of many folks. I pray, Lord, that it brings light to darkness and hope to the hopeless. I pray that in your precious name. Amen. Would you stand with us as we sing this final chorus together and as our uh, frontline team comes forward and accepts the offering? Home. Beside you, open up my eyes in wonder. Show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. Holy, there is no one like you. There is none. new shirt, free bear hugs. That's right. If you haven't gotten one yet, I'll give you one later. All right, we're going to do our declaration. We're going to say it like we mean it. We're going to end our Sunday service on a high note. Right, you ready? We are the head and not the tail. We are above and not beneath. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We are light to the world and salt to the earth. We are called to show forth his praises, his life, and his love to our neighborhood, city, country, and beyond. And you are making a difference on this earth. Yes, you are. Thank you guys for coming out this Sunday. Have a great rest of your weekend.